So Nate, for people filling out their brackets now, uh, one of your chief b bits of advice is don't buy the hype uh, about the hot team. But actually, a couple years ago, the hot team, Connecticut, won. So what do you think about that? So sometimes you look smart. If you're making basketball <laughs> picks, sometimes you look not as smart. Uh, last year, the formula had Kentucky as the best team in the country. They won. Two years ago, though, we were pretty down on Connecticut, who, who won instead. We had like a 100 to 1 shot according to the model. So, you, you know, you get a few things wrong and you hope you make a few better bets in, in, the, in the long run. Now, your bracket this year has Louisville as the favorite, but not a very big favorite. And you seem to think that the era of the sort of dominant favorite is maybe over. Why? In an era when, when you have your kids maybe play for, for a couple of years at most, you have more competitive mid-major teams, um, you have to win six games to win the championship. It's not so easy to come in, even as the favorite, with, with you know, a 60% chance of winning or something. So we have Louisville with about a, a one in five chance or so. Indiana's right behind them, about a 20% chance as well. Um, but it's really hard when you have as much parity as you have now in the college game to expect the team to be a dominant favorite like you might have had with UCLA or, or UNLV, say, back in the day. Now you think the Midwest is the toughest bracket. What do you think is the easiest? Um, probably the East. I think Indiana has a relatively clear path, but the East is a little bit soft where Syracuse is the four could give them a tough game. But apart from that, um, a much easier road than, than Louisville has in the Midwest. Let's talk a little bit about your model and how it works. You start with something that you call a power rating. What goes into that? So the power rating is, is it's, uh, I use four different ones, four different formulas that other people design that are all a little different, but have proven to be pretty reliable in the past. So they're looking mostly at just top level results, meaning, meaning who did you play and how much did you win by, um, and kind of crunching the numbers in that respect. So it doesn't ignore results like Miami had some bad losses early in the year, also a lot of good wins. It accounts for all that together in an objective way. Now, you also add in both the actual seeding as part of the formula and the preseason uh, rankings. Why does it put so much emphasis on the preseason? So the preseason part is a little controversial. And the thinking here is, well, first of all, when we've tested it, back tested the, the program, then this helps you make some, some predictions at the margin. Um, but the reason is that when you play even a 30-game college basketball season, there's a fair amount of luck involved. Remember, NBA teams play, play 82 games instead, not only 30. Um, a lot of the games college teams play are, are against inferior competition. Um, so the preseason ranking tells you something about what the consensus was about how much talent they had going in. It might account for things like the long-term strength of the coaching and the program. And so in general, we found that we have teams that, um, like Miami, for instance, that have a great overachieving year. They tend not to perform very well in the tournament. Okay, for the people who are serious about betting on the game and are, are serious about winning their pools, you say that high-risk strategies can often pay off. What do you mean by that? Well, so if you're in a pool and everyone's picking the same team, then you're not really kind of capitalizing on that asset if you get it right very much. So you'd, you'd want to pick a team that's maybe a little bit overlooked. If you're in a pool, say I'm from Michigan, if you're in a pool um, <laughs> with other people from Michigan, you, you don't want to pick U of M or Michigan State, probably a bad idea. Um, so, you know, so it's not just about picking the favorite. If, if it's close, if you think there's a, a seed, for example, Wisconsin is a five seed, a tough team potentially. Um, they're someone you might pick if you're, if you're looking to diversify your portfolio a bit.